If you or a loved one has ever been to the emergency room for sepsis, then this video is for you. Because today, we're going to talk about the causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment of sepsis from an emergency room perspective. This topic is really important and it's also really near and dear to my heart because I just had a family member that was in the emergency room for sepsis and some important signs and symptoms got missed, which means that treatment didn't get started in an appropriate time frame. So as family members and friends, we need to make sure we know what sepsis is and how to care for it. That way we can advocate for our family members and our friends. And as nurses, we need to understand sepsis as a whole. That way we can advocate for our patients and get treatment started in an appropriate time frame. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is a suspected or proven infection and symptoms of widespread inflammation. And we'll talk about what symptoms of widespread inflammation means in just a little bit. So who gets sepsis? The people most at risk for sepsis are the very old, the very young, the immunocompromised, those who are malnourished, and those with chronic health problems. There are certain medical procedures which place people at increased risk to develop sepsis, and those include things like catheters, surgery, chemotherapy or other immunosuppressant medications, and central lines, which are basically really long IVs that drop directly into the heart. Many different types of bacteria can cause sepsis, but the most frequent way these bacteria enter the body is through the genitourinary tract, so think urine infection. There's a whole plethora of intricate details behind how bacteria stimulate the immune system to cause symptoms of sepsis. But don't worry, I won't bore you with that. Let's talk big picture. Bacteria enter the body and stimulate the inflammatory system. This makes our blood vessels dilate or get bigger, which slows down blood flow to certain organs. And less blood flow means less oxygen, and that damages our organs. The inflammatory system also increases our white blood cell count and stimulates the body's clotting system, which injures blood vessels and causes clots to form inside of them which again cuts off blood supply and oxygen to our organs. In the early stages of sepsis, patients will actually compensate because their heart is working hard to pump blood to their whole body. So their heart rate will be fast, their blood pressure, especially their systolic or their top number will be normal, they will have a fever and typically their skin will be pink and warm and they will also have a high white blood cell count. As sepsis progresses, however, the patient's heart cannot keep up. Remember, blood vessels are dilating or getting bigger and this causes blood pressure to fall and because the heart is no longer keeping up and compensating, blood pressure can fall fairly low. Because blood pressure is falling, the body shunts blood away from the surface of the skin and it shunts it to vital organs, so their skin can become cool and clammy. As blood flow to the brain eventually falls, patients can become sleepy, confused, or out of it. As sepsis continues to progress, the patient becomes sicker and sicker, and organs will start to fail. And the first organ that we see take a hit is the kidneys. So you're going to start to see a low urine output. And also kidney function numbers like a creatinine are going to start to rise. The longer sepsis ensues, the higher the chance of death. Diagnosis of sepsis is based on signs and symptoms and lab work. Earlier I mentioned that sepsis was a suspected or proven infection and symptoms of widespread inflammation. 
and the symptoms of widespread inflammation have four criteria. The first is a body temperature greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or less than 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The second is a heart rate greater than 90 beats per minute. The third is a respiratory rate or how fast someone is breathing greater than 20 breaths per minute. And the fourth is a white blood cell count greater than 12,000 or less than 4,000. If a patient has two, yes, only two of these criteria and some sort of infection, then they have sepsis. So as a patient, if your doctor thinks you might have sepsis, you're gonna get an IV and blood work. You'll also likely be expected to give a urine sample. That way the doctor can see if you have a urine infection that's causing your sepsis. Chest x-rays to check for pneumonia are also common in the sepsis workup. Now, if a patient has abdominal pain or nausea and vomiting, they'll also likely get an abdominal CAT scan. Treatment is aimed at combating the bacterial infection and treating the hypotension or low blood pressure. Within the first three hours of recognizing sepsis, the patients will receive a weight-based IV bolus of fluids. And depending on the patient's weight, some people can receive multiple liters of IV fluid. As far as antibiotics go, they should be administered within one hour of recognition of sepsis and they will always be given IV. Nurses, remember to get two sets of blood cultures from two different sites prior to starting antibiotics. And always keep an eye on your vital signs, especially blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature. Blood pressure and sepsis can drop quickly and without warning. So watch it like a hawk and don't hesitate to talk to your provider about more fluids or pressors if needed. In the case of septic shock, when hypotension or low blood pressure is present, even after adequate amounts of IV fluid, medication may be needed to bring blood pressure back within normal limits. In nursing, we call this medication pressors, and the most common one that we use is called levofed or norepinephrine. If you have any questions related to the content in this video, then drop them in a comment below. And if you have any specific video ideas or want me to make videos on specific content, then post those in a comment as well. For more emergency room videos, click the link over here. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another post.